Now that we've gone through the process for performing an IT security risk assessment and have even walked through uh, sample items, let's just take a couple minutes to summarize some of the key items re uh, related to this type of project. Now, in order to perform a security risk assessment, there's an, a number of items that are needed. First and foremost, the organization needs someone who will own the process and who can facilitate the execution of the project. Not only do you need a strategy, framework, and methodology, you need, um, you need support from senior management, along with involvement from the entire organization. Finally, a plan needs to be in place for dictating and tracking the types and frequency of the assessments. A general security risk assessment should be done on a regular basis, while more concentrated assessments should be done on an as-needed basis for major projects, new systems, and major upgrades. In summary, you've seen this uh, diagram already earlier in the presentation. Um, what it does is it outlines the four phases of the security assessment. Phase one is understanding the business, which entails gathering information about the environment, while phase two is the identification and prioritization of high security risk areas. These phases can be performed through a number of means. You can conduct interviews, generate questionnaires, and obtain relevant policies, procedures, and other supporting material. Now, once the risks have been identified, it's important to not prioritize them in a vacuum. As Johan said earlier, we suggest maybe using a workshop type of forum. And see, we believe that it's necessary to get input and have involvement from all areas of the business. Because what this will do is this will create a level of accountability and ownership in the process by the business. And this also goes a long way in changing the perception that this is strictly an IT-only related responsibility. Now, phase three entails assessing the quality of controls for the risk items and generating a net risk map, which will be used in the last phase of the reporting it's important for management to identify their risk acceptance level, and that should also be formally documented. And then finally, a risk management plan should be generated for addressing the risk items remaining above the risk acceptance level, along with further reducing other risks. Of course, we have to balance cost and benefit. And then this risk management plan should have both one-time projects along with ongoing efforts. This concludes our IT security risk assessment presentation. We thank you for your time today and your attention, and we hope that you found this presentation to be informative. Although we have not identified a specific date, we do plan on conducting a part two to this presentation and going through some more of the details that we didn't have time to cover today. We ask that you stay on the line because we still have, I'm seeing about 10 or 11 minutes to answer questions from the group. Remember, you can actually submit your questions in the Q&A section on the right-hand side of your screen. Now, if after the webinar you still have questions, feel free to contact um, any one of the three of us, either directly or via email. I also believe, Carol, uh, you have a couple more items that you want to cover in closing, so I'm going to hand it back over to Carol. Okay. Very good. Thank you so much, Richard and Johan. And uh, as as Richard said, we are prepared to answer any questions that you may have, uh, and you can use either the Q&A box on the right-hand side of your screen or click the question mark and um, enter your questions there. We'll give just a moment here. We have one question that has come in, and um, so I will pose this to both of you gentlemen, and you can decide who um, should take the question. Can you mention some examples of opportunities that may be identified in an IT security risk assessment? Thank you, Carol. That was a very good question. And um, one common opportunity that we see is uh, for example, uh, related to user authentication solution. Um, many times we see that 
uh, or during the interviews we identified that there could be kind of improved single sign-on or more role-based security or even some, some, of, the, some of the areas you can have a, even automat automatic or tools to actually set up and, and manage some of the, the basic security functions. Another other common opportunity is the logging and monitoring, which take many times the organization pretty weak in or if they do a pretty good, have a lot of good monitoring, they may not using the tools they have in place, or they may need other tools to be able to perform this in an effective and efficient way. All right, thank you. Let's give it just another minute. See if we have any others that come in. Okay. Here's one. Who should drive the IT security risk analysis and risk management plan? Yeah, that's a very, very, that's a very common question. And uh, and, and in theory or in practice, uh, it's the chief information security officer that should drive, take the initiative to perform the security risk analysis and be responsible for the for the overall risk management plan. But as we mentioned during the presentation here and also is stressed in the risk IT framework that we referenced to is that management need to be involved and make the, the decision and finally approve both the risk assessment and the risk management plan. Okay, great. All right, well um, I don't not seeing any other questions. Uh, out, out here. Hi, Carol. This yeah, is Dana. I do have a, I had a question come in um, through private chat. It is, in smaller hospitals, how often do you see dedicated security people in an IT department? It seems that we're headed that way very quickly as a requirement to keep up. Yeah, that's, that's a very, it's a challenge here with the resources in general. And, and uh, even in, and the large hospitals have dedicated security personnel. In the smaller hospital, we see uh, still that uh, that um, that function is kind of a you have a security officer, but it's not the full time function. And uh, based where we're heading, especially now with EMR and everything, it's uh, it's a full time function to really to be able to manage this this uh, all these risk related security. And hopefully that. Uh, survey that we referenced, the IT Policy Compliance Institute will provide some guidance too that it provides value and can reduce your cost and, and by by having good IT security governance and, and, and get the resources needed. But it's it's time to have a, a full time security officer even in a smaller hospital. All right, great. Well thank you. Thank you, Dana, for bringing that question to us. Well this concludes our um, security Risk Assessment Part 1, and we'd like to encourage all of you to uh, please take the survey that will appear as you close your Internet browser at the end of this webcast um, because you could win our Visa gift card. Um, we'd also like to remind you to take a look at our blogs, um, our On Focus blog and our uh, Patient Privacy Matters blogs, blog. And... Um, if you have questions, we've provided our emails, and you can always uh, contact your iatric account manager or info at iatric.com. Thank you very much.